Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, one of the things we've done on this show is talk about different genres and uh, different kind of uh, one area where I think manga is succeeding that you don't, you know, it, it's not po it's not outrage popular. You, you know, it's it's you can't quite get a lot of uh, people all pissed off about it. Um, and it's it's in my mind one of the one of the key areas manga wins is genres. They they basically have an approach where. They tackle lots of different types of formats, lots of different audiences, and they market successfully. It's not, it's not enough to just make those comics. They then figure out how to, you know, message and package. And I mean, you know, what's crazy about manga, and a friend of mine recently pointed this out. It's like, you know, I used to do this bit on the live streams where I would, you know, would guess the title of this manga. And there'd be some kind of wacky cover, and then the title would be even stranger. Um, but in general... What you, what, you know, what the cover promises, what, what kind of is there is more or less what you're getting. You know, they, they, it, it isn't disguised. And, and I think the being able to, to nod into those genres is stuff that's allowed them to grow very successfully in an area that U.S. comics have stated they'd like to, um, in the area of LGBT, you know, rights and, and content, uh, BL and, and other, uh, queer comics, uh, manga have done quite well and been very successful. Whereas in the U S they, they haven't been able to find that, that audience. But I think much of it is, is manga's uh, willingness to really explore those niches. But, uh, but here comes a mail that's kind of uh, calling me out a little bit. Um, <laughs> here we go. You must hate comics for girls. It says, all right, all right, let's see. Let's see what I hate. Hello, bitter perch. I think, uh, I'm I'm gonna go on a limb and say I think this person's being a little tongue in cheek here, but but maybe not. We'll see. It says I've noticed you have recently had a billion bitter videos about the death of comics, along with a trillion videos about how to improve Marvel and DC comics. Okay. What I haven't seen yet is one video talking about the published manga comics uh, being published. Published manga comics. Yep, that's what it says. Being the published manga comics being published for women. Many of these sell very well. My favorite is Nana by Al Yagsa. It has rock and roll and fashion. It's a story about two women, the same name, same age, uh, who are polar opposites. I believe it takes place roughly in Harajuku, but maybe I'm mistaken. One 19-year-old uh, Nana dream is to get married. One night, wait, one 19-year-old Nana dream okay, is to get married, and the other 19-year-old Nana dream is to be the greatest rock and roll singer ever. There are two complete strangers who met on a train to Tokyo whose fate is to meet again and rent an apartment together because all teenagers are poor. And somehow along the way, they become lifelong best friends. There, but there are so many great uh, shoujo manga being published in English by Viz and um, Kodanasha. Uh, why are you trying to save the comics industry by ignoring 50% of the world's population? 50%? That math is sus. 50% uh, of the world's population. And why haven't you had a single video about any shoujo manga? I'm pretty sure I have. Um, by the way, I've talked about, I, I know Rumiko Takahashi doesn't normally fit into that uh, category there, but uh, no, I've done, I've done videos about manga. I, but okay, fair enough. I'm going to be willing to guess uh, this, this writer is being a little, a little tongue in cheek to me. Um, so, I think, uh, so let, let's break down this mail because there's really not a question in there that's, that's serious. Um, I think that, first off, um, in, the, in the U.S., there's been this narrative, and I hear people kind of on all fronts uh, re regurgitate and repeat it, which is to say comics aren't for women. Women can't read, you know, women won't read comics. It's not an audience. Uh, but, you know, it, it is absolutely untrue, and there's plenty of evidence, not just different forms of manga, but also, if you go to a comic convention and just look around at the demographics, you'll get a wake-up call in a hurry. If you look at Webtoon and Tapas and other uh, other sites like that, and you look at some of the demographics and the, the content that's put out, you'll see that there's plenty there for women, and there's plenty of women creators and and uh, readers. So uh, there's, a, there's a huge market for women in comics, for sure. Now, the, the trick is, and I don't know why this is such a complicated, confusing point, but if you're making, say, a uh, ghostwriter, your primary audience might not be women. 
doesn't mean women can't enjoy Ghost Rider. Doesn't mean that uh, women only want girly fashion things. Um, but it, it does mean that there's a historical audience for Ghost Rider where the book was kind of crafted, written, and packaged for boys, young boys in a lot of cases. And so to say, oh no, we need this title that for 40 years of its life has been uh, marketed at one demographic, we need it suddenly to appeal to the other demographic because of uh, equality, uh, that, that makes no sense. Particularly when we've got lots and lots and lots of examples of content that can be created and successfully marketed toward whatever demographic you want. That's the, that's the big fallacy in this argument. And it's, it's one of the things that I think has been the big disproven lie. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, manga and how it's successful and what it means and all the rest, but, but you have to go to a little bit the way back machine, but not, not a huge, uh, you know, way back machine. And it, you know, the American comic industry, particularly the big two, I, I think it was comics, bro, but it may have been one of the other conventions. Uh, basically told retailers that, look, uh, readers, new readers, or any readers, they won't accept new characters. So, you know, we can't, you keep telling us like, hey, just make a new black superhero. We can't do that because nobody will accept a new comic character. Nobody will. Nobody will. And so, therefore, we, that's how, why we have to introduce it and, and change existing characters. Because if we don't change existing characters, nobody will accept it. This was the, the, the story that went out. Bleeding Cool reported on it. Could be reported on it. Lots of, lots of sites reported these statements. And in some cases, Bleeding Cool in particular, have continued to repeat this general story of like these obnoxious fans that just won't accept new things. And so, yeah, we, you know, we do need to do race and gender swaps and other things with our existing superheroes, because otherwise, how would we get that new market? It's impossible otherwise. But if you look at what manga did, it successfully introduced brand new material nobody had ever heard of. And in many cases was culturally radically different. You know, I, I don't, I, I can't stress enough that somehow, some way in uh, Houston, Texas, People are picking up and consuming and loving content that shows, you know, Japanese citizens riding around in trains with uh, traditional Japanese values. And, and I mean, just just a, a life that could not be more different. And yet stuff gets accepted. Why? Because the content's good. Because the story is good. Because it, it appeals to, as the letter writer says, to women or to men or to whoever um, there's a huge contingent of and i wish people wouldn't segment themselves out this way but the black manga twitter so you know black people who are into manga on twitter because everybody has to have a little little demographic club on twitter but you know you've got the, the point is manga with with very i would say limited in a lot of cases kind of cultural impact of the stories, because this is, you, you could fight me on this or argue with me on this, but in many cases, manga, in terms of its point of reference, the different cultures it represents, etc., tends to be a lot more limited than European or U.S. comics. Most of them have traditional Japanese values somewhere baked into that, that book. Now, they could be fighting, it could be a sci-fi comic, it could be dystopian future, it could be all kinds of different things, but it does lean back on you know, Japanese, uh, or at least Asian, uh, cultural tropes. It often does. And yet people adopt it. So, you know, to answer the, the mail writer, uh, look, uh, yes, uh, there's lots and lots of different genres of manga out there. Um, uh, the story that we wrote about, you know, two, two girls travel to the city, both have a dream, rent an apartment together. You know, this is the perfect strangers type scenario of a book. Uh, it's, it's simple. It's easy to understand. You could pitch it on an elevator and yeah, that's going to appeal to not just women, but anybody who's kind of new to comics because it's a relatively simple, easy, straightforward story to get. And that's, that's helpful. If you're trying to break into a new audience, get people to, to adopt your book, keeping it simple, stupid is a good way to go. 
so that's that's kind of what we have here um anyway i <laughs> i guess i should talk more about uh women's manga um but uh, i mean overall this is one of the key areas that manga is successful it, it managed to to grab that audience so here's the good news for the western comic industry uh get out of your own way if you do you you could do this as well it wasn't terribly difficult look how quickly it was able to penetrate the U.S. market. Now, manga has been trying since the 80s in some cases. And there's different waves. But the latest one, the one that really took hold, started around 2012, 2013. We're 10 years into it. And the amount of, of kind of domination that's occurred there is, is amazing. Now, it had, you know, several years of backstory and other things, but you know, what is it? What is the old saying? The, the best time to plant a tree is, you know, is now the second best time is, you know, or, you know, sorry, I, I fucked the whole uh, quote up. The best time to plant a tree is yesterday. The second best time is now. The idea is like, get, get going. You know, you, you may be behind, but if you don't start now, you're going to be behind forever. So get going. And I think if uh, you are Marvel or DC or Dark Horse or Boom or Mad Cave or whoever you might be, um, now is the time to start, you know, looking into these other genres, start start tackling it, or be content that you know Viz is going to take it away from you forever. I mean that that seems stupid, but but there you have it. Anyway, thank you very much for the mail and the challenge. Appreciate it. What do you think? What what other? What forms and genres of manga would you like to see me cover? Yes, I am reading the comments. Uh, what would you like to see me cover? What would you like to see me talk about? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.